Go to cover AWS ECAS, Azure ACAS, and Google GKE in this video. So I've had a chance to play with these three Kubernetes offerings from these three cloud providers. And so I'll give you some of my thoughts on this. For that, I put together this a very long slide deck with exactly one slide. Okay, so I figure what we're gonna do is just actually cover some points of interest and summarize it. There's a lot of comparisons out there and um, I think just kind of boiling it down is gonna help be helpful. First is pricing. So AKS, interestingly, uh, you don't have to pay currently for the control plane. That's cool. Uh, GK, you don't have to pay for the control plane if you're only running one zonal cluster. Otherwise, then you have to pay for it, I think it's $72 a month or so. And the reason why I said AKS, you don't currently have to pay for the control plane is because actually GKE started that way also. GKE used to not have to pay for the control plane and then they eventually started charging money for it, $72 a month. And EKS, you've always had to pay for the control plane at $72 a month, okay? Um, Maturity-wise, uh, GKE is the oldest player in the space. They've been around since uh, 2015. It makes sense because they're big contributors to Kubernetes. Uh, AKS and EKS, they start around 2018, uh, but they've been around for a while too now. Ease of setup. I would say AKS is actually, I think, the easiest to set up because it's just a kind of click installer. You just click a couple buttons and then you have a Kubernetes cluster running. And one of the reasons I think it's so easy to set up is because actually it creates a network for you automatically. And so it creates a, basically a zero network for you. GKE, it's also pretty easy to set up and so they're kind of known for their easy setup. It's also like kind of a point and click kind of setup installer. Uh, you do have to specify a little bit more about the network. Uh, EKS, I would say, has a couple more steps. <laughs> and uh, I think uh, AWS is, they like to kind of make a lower level kind of foundational plumbing. So uh, maybe that's the reason, but I think it's actually a, 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 a actually more valid reasons because the networks actually are, are a lot different between the three cloud providers. And that's just because the networks a lot, work a lot differently. Azure and GKE, their networks like and the way you define subnets, uh, you don't really have to worry about actually zones because that things are much more simple, but with some pros, there are some cons, you have a little bit less control, okay? With the AWS, uh, you can you know define sub uh, private subnets uh, and have a little more fine grained control over there with, uh, with uh, AKS and GKE. It's a little bit less control, but then you get a lot more easy using. You don't have to worry about like, you know, having uh, AZs in two different um, zones in order to ha manage high availability and all that kind of stuff. But I would say in terms of easiness, uh, AKS is the easiest. Uh, GKE is a very, very close second, uh, pretty much a, almost a tie. And then uh, EKS is a, a bit more work, okay? So you have to kind of go through the starter guides and everything. Uh, other mentions, so, AWS has a EKS Fargate, which means basically not only do you not have to manage the control plane, uh, AWS doesn't do that for you. You also don't have to manage the nodes. So you don't have to manage the compute nodes. So that's pretty awesome. And I'm putting serverless in quotes there because that's what some people kind of call it. GK basically has a, a similar offering called uh, Autopilot. Uh, and uh, right now Azure doesn't have one, but uh, I'm sure they'll eventually come up because uh, uh, they're all kind of pretty much kind of mimicking each other. Uh, I also also want to mention that EKS is probably the most used right now because just mainly because AWS is uh, the largest cloud provider. GK uh, is probably second, and also I want to mention that GK has kind of more built-in plugins. And a lot of uh, people kind of kind of focus on this and they say, oh, you know, there's a lot more things that are built in, like the cluster autoscaler and all that kind of stuff that are built in. Uh, and Azure has the autoscaler built in too. I'm sure with e EKS with uh, their add-on kind of system, they're going to eventually kind of have it too. But a lot of people seem to make a, make a pretty keen point about that. Uh, it's just, I guess, less to uh, less things to manage, but like the core, like atoms are already there, like core DNS and all that, and the uh, baseline, they're pretty much all the same there, okay? And I think uh, just uh, depending on which cloud you end up going with, that's what you're gonna end up using, right? If you're R in AWS, you're gonna use AWS. If you're R in Google, you're gonna use the GKE. And if you're R in Azure, you're gonna use AKS. That's just how it works. You usually don't start by picking up the Kubernetes technology then using the cloud is usually the other way around, okay? Okay, so that pretty much covers the differences between uh, these three Kubernetes uh, offerings from these three cloud providers in a presentation, in my very long one slide presentation, but I thought it'd be more actually interesting to actually see in action. So what I did was I created a EKS cluster, okay? I created an AKS cluster. I also created a GKS cluster. <laughs> So all three of them, okay, I have been created, okay? So, and um, I also have configured my basically uh, cube uh, contexts here to have all three available. So let's actually take a look at all three. Let's go actually start with AWS and we'll just go down the line here uh, and then do cube control git node, okay? 
you see I'm running uh, one node there. Let's switch context now to uh, Azure, okay? And uh, let's do get node again. So I'm also running one node there. And uh, let's switch to the last one uh, is Google. And let's uh, get the node again. And also guess what, running one node. I'm running one, one node mainly because, you know, spare costs here, okay? Uh, and what I also did was on all these clusters, uh, except uh, one of them, because I just want to show you what I'm doing in the deployment. Uh, but I deployed basically a deployment, which is just running Nginx web server here, just two replicas of that, and also a service here, okay? So uh, that's why I've kind of deployed, okay? And let's actually go uh, to, we're in the uh, Google one right now, so let's go Q control apply, okay? Uh, oh, I have to go to the right folder, Q control apply, let's apply the service, okay? And that's created, now the deployment. And I've already kind of created everywhere else, but that's basically the command you're gonna have to run in order to create your Kubernetes resources. And guys who know Kubernetes are kind of know this, okay? Uh, and also, I want to point out that all these clusters are actually built with TerraSpace. Uh, I, I cover this in an additional video, so check those out. And the, the source code is actually all available also in those videos and everything. But I just use that to spin up all, all these clusters, okay? So uh, let's actually go click around and kind of evaluate these clusters from like the council perspective. I think that's gonna actually be helpful. So here's this cluster, EKS dev I'm calling here. You can see uh, when you click on, on through it, it's a pretty simple interface. Uh, it's showing you the nodes here and then you click on workloads and pretty much uh, the workloads are the kind of resources that are running on the cluster. And there are some core kind of services are running in cube system there and demo web is actually what we deployed, okay? So you click on demo web there and then you can kind of go kind of uh, jump into the deployment and you can see there's two pods here and there there's some information about label and annotations and you click within the pod you can kind of go and see the pod kind of running and then you see more information about the pod and the container that the pod's actually running all that it's very lightweight <laughs> okay uh it's at least that interface okay and then i'm gonna go back here and i'm gonna click on configuration so most of the actually complexity in the uh, gui here or the council is actually under configuration where you see the details of the API server endpoint. That's when you run, let's say, cube um, cluster info, cube control cluster info, and it'll tell you kind of all this, or most of this information. Or uh, then the compute here, this is uh, the node groups, okay? So this is what provides uh, basically EC2 compute capacity to run your pods, okay? And uh, you can see there's one compute node right here, or node group, and you can click on that, and then you can see actually how many nodes are in that group, okay? Then you can see all the details of that. You see Kubernetes labels, okay? Update config here and all that, uh, taints, history tags, okay? And you can see what I'm actually doing is I'm actually running a, a node group configuration that allows different instance types here. Uh, okay, um, and then let's see what else. Networking, you see all the networking stuff here. And um, basically I'm just running off a, a very simple um, VPC here. Okay, uh, and actually this VPC was actually built with the TerraSpace also because here's the thing with AWS, you have a lot more control over the network, the VPC. So you actually have to set up the VPC with specific things in order to kind of uh, tell Kubernetes where it's allowed to deploy things like, well, let's say internal load balancers versus um, public facing load balancers. I'm just actually click on the, uh, basically the VPC that was, uh, was created as part of this and kind of show you, um, let's say the, the subnets here. So you see there are uh, basically three private subnets and uh, three public subnets and they have certain tags because these tags tell Kubernetes kind of what to do like here it's an internal ELB. So this is where Kubernetes is supposed to deploy the internal ELBs. And this is where it's supposed to deploy the external ELBs. It's just ELB here, okay? So uh, this is why there's a little more complexity in setting up, uh, I would say, uh, EKS on uh, AWS. Mainly it's because uh, more is like a networking thing, I think, okay? All right, let's go back to Kubernetes service here. Oh, let's actually just close that down, go back to this tab. Add-ons, so add-ons are basically a way to manage things like core DNS actually, and this is relatively new. So you know, uh, when you spin up the uh, cluster, depending on how you spin it up, sometimes the add-ons are kind of uh, done as part of the cluster. Sometimes it's actually done as this add-on system. And in the future, you just kind of click add new here and then you add the uh, add-ons you want according to this and all this other stuff, okay? Authentication, there's another tab here, logging up to history tag. So I basically went through the entire council for EKS there, okay? So let's look at the next council now, Microsoft, okay? Azure, so here's the cluster, click on dev cluster here. And uh, I, I would say like, I actually like the visual design of this. Uh, it's a nice color scheme, okay? So it's kind of nice. And then down here, uh, this is the namespaces. So th this is Kubernetes uh, resources uh, on um, EKS. They call it workloads, you see? And it's much more simple here. Uh, Azure, 
basically, here's your workloads here or your resources, and here's basically a default namespace. Underneath, if you click on the default namespaces, you see uh, information, I guess, about the uh, the default namespace, which is not really much besides, you know, there's no YML here because this is the default namespace is built in. So if you're deploying your own namespace, then you probably get more information. Okay, um, workloads. Okay, uh, workloads, you can see I deployed this demo web uh, Kubernetes deployment here. So if you click on this, then you can see the, the two pods running it under it. And you can click on that, and you can see actually information about the pod, and you can click on that, and you can see container. So uh, it's just a different interface here. Uh, it gives you some decent information also. Let's go back here. Services, you can see the service. Here's the demo web service I deployed here. You can see that it's serving traffic to these two pods here uh, from the uh, selector labels, label selectors. Um, Okay, uh, and then you can see the node pools under here. So here's where they kind of put the node pool, and there's a default node pool, and you can add additional node pools here too. Um, so uh, Google calls it node pools, Azure calls it node pools, and uh, uh, AWS EKS calls it uh, node groups, okay? Um, but it's essentially the same thing. It's a, basically a, a record, uh, a placeholder to then uh, deploy your EC2 instances or VMs to provide compute capacity to your Kubernetes cluster. Okay, uh, so that's what your node pool looks like. There's some nice monitoring charts here. Uh, and I, this is where kind of, uh, I will say EKS is, uh, is pretty lacking right now, to be honest. Yeah, uh, they need a little bit better monitoring on this, on the compute nodes. Maybe you click on this compute node, then you can kind of see some more information right here. But uh, there's no graphs really. Look, it's just basically just a table chart. And this is, you know, uh, AWS focus is kind of more plumbing, you know? Um, but eventually, you know, there's no disk pressure or anything here under here. Um, but eventually, uh, I think that will kind of improve all this, okay? Okay, um, but this is nice charts right here. You can see kind of network, CPU, disk space, memory, and all that kind of stuff. Okay, now uh, let's go back here to this cluster and cluster configuration. You can see it here, and then you can also see networking here, okay? So this this is the networking where, like I said, what happens is actually Azure will actually create the, uh, the network for you without you actually have to do anything. For this, the EKS, actually uh, the Terraform code that, that I wrote actually creates a VPC uh, that's compatible with with, um, with EKS. For Azure, you just you don't even have to worry about it. It just, it, it creates it for you and then you can kind of actually look at the virtual networks and you can actually see the network that they it created for us right here. So that's pretty nice, okay? Uh, okay, last offering is Google's here. Okay, so this is GKE and this is what the council looks like. You click on the dev cluster here. You can see the details. You can see a lot of different details here, okay? Uh, then you can see the nodes here, and under nodes, you can, basically are called node pools. This is what provides compute capacity to your Kubernetes, basically um, uh, for your Kubernetes resources. And you can see here, there's instance groups here. So basically, um, it's similar to actually like um, EKS. Uh, GK uses uh, something called instance groups, and and in the AWS world, they call it new group, node groups. But the node groups are essentially managed by auto scaling groups. So it's kind of all similar. It's it's very similar. To some of the, these cloud kind of concepts are very similar across the, basically the different cloud provider offerings because they're kind of mimicking each other. Then you can, can kind of see um, uh, the the instance groups here, okay? And then you can see the kind of instance here of the group, okay? Let's actually go back to GKE one more time right here because that takes you to the uh, the compute engine actually uh, council, okay? Um, going back to the cluster here, okay? Nodes. We kind of just went through that, okay? Uh, and this is uh, the more information about the nodes here, storage, okay? So that's uh, that's pretty good. Uh, it just shows you some storage here. Now, um, I want to see uh, workloads. There we go, it's over here, this menu. Uh, okay, so there's the workload. There's the basically the deployment I deployed, basically the demo web, and you click through that. It gives you a lot of good information, actually. And I actually really like this. Uh, it has a nice um, council, uh, graphs and monitoring charts kind of right here where you kind of expect it which is nice, <laughs> all right? And then you click on details here. Then you can see all the basically detail uh, information about your deployment here and your revision history, your events. Basically, this would be like queue control desc uh, describe on the deployment. And then you can see the events, which is kind of nice. Then you can see the logs too. So I would say this is like, uh, there's kind of much more features here because it's older, right? So there's 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 a lot more to this, this GUI, I always kind of say. Uh, but then I will also say that uh, this, I kind of like the style of this. And then I also like the simplicity of this, okay? So, um, but yeah, if you're kind of looking for kind of like more features, then it, it's here, right here, okay? Uh, on GKE. And then, okay, services, you click on services and you, can, and you can see the deployment web service I deploy and you can see it's serving to those two pods. And here you don't have to click around as much as you did in the uh, Azure 
offering or the EKS offering you can just kind of see in this panel. And there are some nice charts here too. And there's some details here, events here and logs here, Yama configuration. So the brawl basically Yama, if you're doing basically a Git service, a output YML uh, or on the Q, with the Q control command. Okay, so uh, that's pretty much uh, it. Uh, let's see what else is maybe configuration management. No, there's really nothing else uh, I, I gotta really cover there. But that is it. That's uh, basically the a comparison of the three different offerings. AWS EKS, Azure AKS, and Google GKE. Okay, so hopefully you found that helpful. Thanks.